We're turning our attention to another matter entirely away from politics. Uh, sometimes politics affects issues like this um, in terms of what the results that you might get. Uh, but then we also have a situation on the ground. And uh, today is World Refugees Day. June 20th every year is marked as World Refugees Day. And to discuss the issues around the refugee situation around the world, and particularly as it affects Nigeria, we have with us Mrs. Bridget Mukanga Eno, who is the UNHCR representative here in deputy representative here deputy in Nigeria. Yes. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Uh, thank you so much, Maupe. Now, you, we have been seeing all that is happening. I mean, you, you just have to look at the news, and mm. you see across the world. I mean, right now we have the uh, the. Rohingya crisis, for instance, which is happening in Asia. Uh, here in Nigeria, it's a different kettle of fish. You have more internally displaced persons than you, than you have refugees. But then, you know, when you see people being displaced, whichever way, it's still not a very pleasant situation. What precisely would you say that this day seeks to highlight? Well, um, June 20th, as you just said, is the World Refugee Day. Um, we started celebrating this um, day in 1974 when the African Union uh, Convention on the Refugees came into force, the 1964 Convention on the Refugees in Africa. And um, this day actually is for us, the world, to celebrate the courage of refugees and also to continue the solidarity with them. Um, across the world, you just mentioned the situation is not improving, unfortunately. We have reached more than 69 million displaced persons across the world. This is the highest number ever in the history of UNHCR. And um, refugees and displaced persons are a consequence of many of our ac ac activities, either political activities or governance or lack of uh, human rights, abuses of human rights, and so on. So this is what is causing the displacement. But of course, today we also look at the situations of uh, the global warming, which is also affecting some countries, in inducing some of the clashes that we have seen between farmers and herders because of the global warming. And all of that is contributing to increasing the number of the displaced persons across the world. I find it very interesting that you're focusing more on displaced persons, not just refugees. Even though today is World Refugee Day, you talk about 69 million displaced persons. Indeed. Not refugees. Is, the, is the UNHCR expanding its definition of refugees and including internally displaced persons within it? Well, um, we have, the definitions are different, of mm -hmm. course. Refugees are those who have crossed an international border to seek for asylum in another country because of fear of persecution and because of fear of perse persecution on their race, on their religion, on their political opinion, and so on. Meanwhile, uh, for the internally displaced persons, they could live for the very same reasons, but they remain within their country. And also to that definition, we have those, the mass d displacement, which can be caused by the war, like the crisis in the North East Nigeria, and uh, other crises. So that is where we, but the, the definition is quite clear. Uh, there, there are similar populations, but the difference is that one category has crossed the border while the other one has not crossed the border. Now the point I'm trying to make is, is the UNHCR expanding its mandate to also cater for well, IDPs. No, the mandate has been expanded for the entire humanitarian community. Uh, normally, IDPs are within the primary responsibility of a, their own government, but because of the uh, unfortunate situation in which they are, some countries could not cater for their own IDPs, and they sought support from international community. That is why, uh, since 2005 within the reform of the UN, a global reform of the UN, some responsibilities were given to various agencies. And for UNHCR, we provide protection for IDPs, the shelter component, the camp management of ID camps in uh, any conflict situation. So these are three areas of responsibilities where UNHCR comes in. Meanwhile, other agencies come also with their various uh, uh, responsibilities, such as uh, UNICEF for the children, of course. Uh, we have WFP for food, uh, FAO for... So within our respective uh, um, 
expertise, we provide that in support of governments that has uh, a country that is facing uh, internal displacement. Mr. Zeno, how do you assess the buy-in or the level of buy-in or co cooperation uh, coming from the state governments in question here, particularly in the Northeast, and also the federal government as it relates to the work your agency is doing on the ground here? Well, we are lucky to have the very good cooperation from the government of Nigeria, both at federal and at state level. Uh, we are working with the Borno state uh, authorities for those in, in, in Borno, uh, Adamawa state authorities. Uh, we have Yobe, we have offices in all these uh, states. Of course, uh, we also are working in the south um, of Nigeria with the situation of Cameroonian refugees. Mm -hmm. So we, we are cooperating with uh, the Cross River, Akwai Bomb, um, Taraba State for, for the Cameroonian refugees. But also we have Lagos State where we have urban refugees and uh, Ogun State where we have been having for very many years uh, the Liberian and Sierra Leoneans who were evacuated to Nigeria during the ECO, ECOMOG deployment in those countries and uh, Nigerian, the refugees who were brought in Lagos State and Ogun State, Ijebode, they have been very well integrated by the government. What have the challenges been though? I mean, shortfalls. Are there any shortfalls in terms of funding or in terms of strategy or in terms of synergy? What are the challenges you're facing? Well, the, 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 the main challenge is, first of all, the, the, the large number of IDPs that we are having. We are talking here of more than 1.8 million displaced persons in the northeast Nigeria. That alone can represent any of the country, countries of, in Africa. Botswana is 2 million people. Uh, if you look at Gabon, it's 1 million people. But here we are talking of 1.8 million. It's basically a, a small country to deal with. So the, it's a huge displacement. And behind these numbers, you have people. Behind every IDP is a story on how they fled their, can, their, their place of origin, how they intend to, co to go back to those places, how they can continue sending their children to school, and so on. So there are a number of challenges or uh, situations that need to be addressed with the, the displacement in the Northeast. The second challenge is, of course, the security situation. Um, there are many areas where we cannot even access the displaced persons. Um, we, 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 we are happy that the federal government and the military have done a lot in recovering a number of LGAs that were under the control of the insurgency. But some of these LGAs are still inaccessible because the places have been polluted. But at the same time, um, there's, no, there's no deployment yet of civil servants in some of those areas. So even when the IDPs would like to go back to those places, there are no basic services for them. And uh, they, they find themselves only around the LGA the, uh, headquarters uh, in the form of another camp mm. while they should be going back to their activities and produce, uh, get some uh, means of living for themselves and their families. They are still relying heavily on the humanitarian assistance. 